हॅलो फ्रेंड्स आय एम संपदा कुलकर्णी वेलकम्स यू इन माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स इन दिस व्हिडिओ सेशन आय एम एक्सप्लेनिंग यू हाऊ टू कॅल्क्युलेट ॲड्रेसेस इन सिक्वेन्शियल ऑर्गनाइज्ड डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स सो फॉर अन ॲरे इफ इट इज वन डी टू डी ॲरे देन हाऊ टू कॅल्क्युलेट द ॲड्रेस लोकेशन्स दॅस वी विल स्टडी इन दिस व्हिडिओ सेशन बिफोर मुव्हिंग टू द कंटेंट आय वुड लाईक टू रिक्वेस्ट यू टू सबस्क्राईब माय चॅनल टेक टॉक्स and keep the bell ringing now let's overlook the concept of sequential organized data structures so the data structure who utilizes memory which is allotted sequentially goes under the sequential organized data structure basically it is one type of data structure and that it's categorized with respect to the memory allocation the way in which memory is is get allotted so the if the memory is get allotted continuously then it is called as sequential organized data structure and again one more point we have to keep in mind that the sequential organized data structure goes under the static data structure as well because the memory is get allotted statically that is at the time of compile whatever the space required for that particular data structure is get allotted at the time of compilation only that's why it goes under static data structure as well now we'll see the disadvantage of sequential organized data structure now let's see one example if i have i have declared an array of say 50 and at the time of execution i came to know that i have to store the information or the elements of size 60 can i increase the size of the data structure if it is linear sorry if it is sequential no i can't as well as if the size declared is 50 and my requirement is only 20 elements can i shrink the size of sequential organized data structure no i can't so as far as the requirements are concerned the sequential organized data structures can't expand or shrink their size at the time of execution so this is the big disadvantage and what are the examples of sequential organized data structures they are array of integer array of character array of float array of structure and so on so basically array is an example of sequential organized data structure and which allocates memory continuously and again this is a static data structure as well now let's move to the heart of this video session is nothing but address calculation so we'll compare the address calculation for 1d array and the 2d array so what is the first point for a comparison is way to access the array element is nothing but name of array and its index position as it is 1d array a single dimension a single index is sufficient in case of 2d array name of array is common but here we need to use both the dimension the first one is for row index second one is for column index respectively now let's see the example for the both so for example if the name of array is array and i want to access the zeroth element then i will write down like this and the name of 2d array is matrix and if i want to access the zeroth row and second column element of the matrix then i will write down like this let's see the next point where address calculation is done with the help of formula where we have to know the base address in both the cases that is in case of 1d array as well as in 2d array and this base address is get added with the index and whatever the result will generated whatever the resultant address will get generated that we can access with the help of value at the address that is with pointer then with the help of this address will get calculated and value at the pointer will help you to identify or to access the element which is present at that address location this was with respect to 1d array with respect to 2d array what we have to write down the base address will get added with the row index multiplied by number of columns because 
we suppose to move forward with the respective number of columns in every row so that's why there is a multiplication and if whenever we we are moving to the desired row index we have to add the column index as well so in combination of all these terms we will get an address that the value presented address is nothing but the element the required element which we can access from the 2d array the last point is nothing but whenever we are going to access the element of an array that is nothing but the name of array and the index here you can see that for both the arrays 1d array and 2d array they both are get converted internally into this formula to access first of all to calculate the address location and then access the respective value present at that address location we will see all these things with the help of example so this is the example uh, c++ code is there and uh, internally how the memory is allotted for this 1d array is shown over here so whenever we are going to access the element array of i that is get converted into or this equivalent into the base address plus the index so whatever the base address is nothing but the name of array plus i is nothing but the index now let's calculate the address for every location so base address is nothing but the starting address of array that is 65510 plus index is 0 because we are taking care of the 0th element of an array and why this is multiplied by 2 here you can see that to store the every element of an array we have used 2 bytes so that's why we are going to use multiplication of 2 bytes this is done by the compiler internally okay what we have seen base address plus index so we will take care of these things only and whatever the index is there which can which will get multiplied by 2 that means that the number of bytes required to store every type of element that will get multiplied with that number so 0 multiplied by 2 is 0 and that's why is nothing but the address 65510 is get accessed with the uh, syntax array of 0 now let's move forward what will happen over here you can see that the base address is same index is 1 because we are accessing the first element of an array multiplied by 2 so 1 2 is 2 and the addition will be 65510 plus 2 is nothing but 65512 and here you can see that this is nothing but the address of the first element of an array that is array 1 in the same way we will move forward for the second element of an array 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 so that's why the resultant address will, will be 65510 and the value present at the address 65510 is nothing but the 3 which is nothing but the element array of 2 and in this way the numbers will get accessible by calculating the address locations of 1d array I hope you have understood the things now let's move forward for 2d array how to access the elements of 2d array we have seen that in the previous video session that two indices we will require to access the 2d array so a of ij is equivalent to the base address plus row index multiplied by number of columns whatever the size of the matrix we have mentioned at a time of declaration from that it we are going to pick the number of columns plus the columns index that is the desired column index which we supposed to access so where whenever array of ij we are going to use in our program internally it will get converted into value at the address present array that is nothing but the base address plus row index is nothing but i as far as our syntax is confirmed concern and multiply by 3 is nothing but we have mentioned here the size of uh, array is 3 by 3 means this 3 is second subscription is nothing but about the number of columns and plus j is nothing but the column index now let's see this with the help of example this example is also I have explained in a previous uh, video session you can go through that directly we will go for the address calculation so for example for this matrix 
I want to access the element present at 0, 0 position that is row number 0, column number 0. Now let us just replace all the values that is matrix is nothing but the base address. Here you can say that the base address is 65510. I is nothing but 0. Number of columns are nothing but 3. They are multiplied with each other plus 0 is nothing but the jth column and the address calculated is nothing but 65510 and which value is present at the address that address location is nothing but 1 and here you can see that the index is 0 0 now let's see one more example where we are going to access the element present at 0 1 position that is 0 row first column so the formula is replaced with the values this is nothing but the base address i is 0 here you can see that columns number of columns are 3 and j is nothing but 1 what will be the result 0 multiplied by 3 is 0 plus 1 is 1 here again I have multiplied it with 2 because here you can see that to store every element of an array it, it acquires the space of 2 bytes so that's why internally it will get multiplied by 2 1 multiplied by 2 is 2 that 2 will get added with the base address the resultant address will be 65512 and in this way here you can see that the value present at address 65512 is nothing but 2 and will get access with the index 0 1 so here you can see that this is matrix 0 1 two more examples we will see from that so if i want to access the matrix of or the element of matrix they are 1 2 that is row is 1 column is 2 so this is your row 1 and this is your column 2 so we are going to access this element but how to add how the address will get calculated for the same so this is the base address plus the row number is 1 number of columns are 3 they are get multiplied with each other 3 ones are 3 plus 2 is nothing but 5 so here you can say that this is the 5 multiplied by 2 because 2 bytes are required to store the every element after that 5 2 is 10 and this will get added with the base address so this is nothing but 65520 and here you can see that this is nothing but the address 65520 which will get converted with this syntax and what the value is present at that address location is nothing but 6 so the index position 1 2 having the value 6 let's take one more example or the last example here we can see that 3 1 so let's replace all the values the base address i is 3 j is 1 the number of columns are 3 3 3 is a 9 plus 1 is 10 multiply by 2 2 uh, is uh, multiply by 2 is for the number of bytes required to store the every integer value then 10 2 is a 20 this will get added with its base address and the address is final address is 65530 and the value present at this address is nothing but 11 here you can see that this is nothing but its index position row 3 column 1 and here the value is value present at that address location is nothing but 11 so in this way we can calculate the address of 2d array I hope you have under understood all the concepts to calculate the address location. So thank you friends for listening and watching this video. If you like the content and the video, please do not forget to give the comment. Here I am providing you a subscription link for my channel Tech Talks along with the videos of data structure along with the playlist of the data structure. Happy data structuring, happy learning. Thank you.